You're listening to Agriculture Today over the K-State Radio Network. Thanks for being along with us once more. Well, the grain markets are quite an intriguing thing to watch right now. Usually are anyway, but with still added spice this week in some quarters. We'll talk once more with grain market economist Dan O'Brien of K-State Research and Extension from his office in Colby, Northwest Kansas. Dan, to start with this, following last week's bullishness in the corn and bean markets, there's been something of a pause in those rallies this week. Is this just a matter of the market stopping for a moment and taking stock of where things are? I, I think that there's uncertainty um, in terms of crop damage uh, done to Iowa from the storm, the storm earlier this week that, that needs to be dealt with. Uh, needs needs to be digested well within the last bit of time here as that storm came through and um, uh, and if you look at the corn market we we have seen the corn market go from a, a low of about about 308 there thereabouts uh, within the last five six days up to a high of just over 330 uh, in, on the uh, on the uh, September contract the close for these futures yesterday uh, 329 and a half. So the market has taken that and you can see its judgment is that, is that uh, uh, in so many words that the USDA's projection of 15.287 billion bushels will be pared down some, but, but uh, on the low side, best pessimistic thoughts are 200, excuse me, 300 million, maybe 250. There's a lot of pessimism as to whether uh, whether even even though that whether if that corn even though it's flat will ultimately cause that much of a of a challenge and frankly as you as we look at the USDA and the ag press of late um, uh, ag market analysts um, uh, you know the 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 estimates range from two hundred and fifty to three hundred million on the low side to five hundred million up to seven or eight. Uh, and we're talking about the damage to the Iowa corn crop. From the Iowa country. corn crop and some, uh, you know, as you look at the track of that storm on weather maps, it did go some into Illinois. Just had a meeting of uh, colleagues that work in, in both those states, uh, the virtual conference. We look at grain market things. And uh, for both corn and soybeans, they're both pretty reticent to think that there's much impact. Uh, I, now, I'm, I personally maybe they're too reticent uh you know uh corn that's laying down flat like that stripped up soybeans uh it, and, and especially now with when, when you look at the weather forecast in those areas and the amount of moisture we've had in uh when you person can see this on our notes we put together uh when you look at the accumulated seven day moisture it is as it is zero <laughs> in in those areas now. Yeah, Iowa had drought or, or concerns to begin with. Iowa came last thirty days. Iowa was really the bullseye, but even even over into northern part of Illinois, you've got problems. But projected uh, next uh, well, the last seven days. Well, well uh, Iowa had problem. Oh, Illinois had problems along with Iowa and parts of Wisconsin. The last thirty days, the last seven days, blackout. You know nothing there. So you've got. In in uh, I guess our Kansas experience kind of kind of affects how I view crop recovery. When we get a problem in wheat, a freeze or something, and we think, oh, this could be terrible. Well, how many years? About half the time or more, we tend to get rainfall, cool temperatures. It all responds, and you know, no key is no crop stress. Well, we bent this stuff over, and we're we have no moisture. We're, we're not getting more moisture now. I could argue, well, maybe it had moisture before. But uh, and, and just hear um, uh, from people in that area, just different, different stories. So I, I, I don't, I, I think that the, the market obviously has said, no big deal. You know, we got enough corn, but uh, we won't know until uh, probably the, the September uh, USDA crop production report. And that comes at about the end of that second week. <clears throat> and where, where they'll look at the, they'll have people actually actually out in the fields on the the first week in September around around September first and um, 
and they'll act, they'll have their own people doing plot measurements. And, but even with that, the USDA in their hesitancy will, uh, may not, if, if there's something out there, they'll still uh, forecast within a bound of, of uncertainty. We probably, like, as in so many of these stories, we won't know until October or later uh, what the real size of that is. But, but uh, whereas the market right now is uh, pretty obvious, it's, it's thinking this is no big deal, 200, 300 million bushels, uh, that the surprise would be uh, if it went from five to, to eight or more. Um, you know, and uh, 200 million bushels, well, but by estimates, about 5.8 million acres time in, in Iowa is, is affected thereabouts. But with the heavy winds, US, there's some numbers out saying even more, but say 5.8 million acres thereabouts. And, um, and uh, you know, if that's 10, 10 bushel an acre, well, that's 58 million bushels. If it's 100 bushel an acre, it's 580. And, uh, and then you're, it's a battle between the acres actually affected and, and the yield. Their, their projected yield for the state's 200. So 100 bushel an acre, uh, off of that, that's, that's basically half, half down with a bunch of zeros in those affected counties. So uh, obviously I'm all fired up about this, uh, but, I, but, but, but the overall market has said, uh, no moss, not gonna worry about it. Not not a big deal. Well, we'll we'll see if that's if that ha ends up being a reasonable assumption or not. Let's accentuate the positive, if we might, for a second here. As far as price action here in Kansas, you look at the basis for corn doing very well, and for grain sorghum, absolutely on a hot streak here in the state. Um, for grain grain sorghum bids, uh, basis bids uh, again based off these same futures. Uh, uh, unbelievable. For, for instance, in Salina, uh, we have a, a positive basis at, off our, this is off our ag manager basis tool. A person can go look at different locations around the state. Basis in Salina, about 70 cents over. And that the next highest we'd had at any, any years back to and including 2016, grain sorghum was, was 40 cents under. So amazing, you know, an amazing differential. And that's, and that's par, really par for the course. And what gets your attention is, for those grain sorghum basis bids is their strong uptrend in, well, in Colby, uh, Colby location we looked at, Garden City, uh, Salina, uh, still upwards, not quite as dramatic in Hutchinson, Topeka, shooting upwards pretty strong, uh, even Ben Strong staying there in Columbus. So. So grain sorghum, strong basis bids, signs that elevators anticipating export business gonna continue. It's telling that when you look at the, the daily uh, ex, um, ethanol plant bids for feed grains, there is not a bid for grain sorghum in can, listed for Kansas. So- That's rare, that really is. That, that really is. That, that just shows that the, that the demand pull into the export market isn't leaving any, any oxygen for at least what we can see on on yesterday in for a grain sorghum and for corn but corn's not doing that bad either you and i were talking before we went on the air when you look at the the ethanol plant bids across the united states and look at the kansas corn bid it's a range of from five under to 40 over and the next on the top on the top end the next highest bid in the united states is 15 over so we, we uh, there was somebody wrote a book, it, it was dealing with other things, says, well, wh what's wrong with Kansas? But there's nothing wrong with Kansas if, if you're trying to sell, sell corn to ethanol plants. <laughs> you know, this is a tremendous bid. And the, the basis bids, uh, they, they differ regionally for corn. Corn, uh, in, in, again, the Colby location, uh, about 5, 10 under. Ne next highest we've been at this time uh, here in recent years, about 35 under. Uh, Garden City, we're about 10 over. Next highest we'd seen at this time, this time of year is about even basis. Uh, Salina, we're, we're, we're pretty strong, about 30, 30 under, and we've been higher than that. So still decent, but not exceedingly strong. Uh, Hutchinson, uh, Mid-Kansas Co-op in Hutchinson. Uh, we get these specific locations we look at. Uh, the highest basis bid, about five under or so that we've seen any, since any year back in 2016 and 16, we were level. <clears throat> in, in Atchison, trending upwards, but just more of a, so more of an okay basis, kind of like Salina. 
<coughs> but in Columbus, shooting higher now, now at about 25 uh, cents, cents over. And uh, the highest we'd seen back to and include 2016 was about 15 over. So I mean, we're bemoaning the uh, futures, but the basis continues to be strong in Kansas for these feed grains in, in many locations. So just stop provoking. Um, as we go, I do want to mention some things happening on the export side. Uh, we, we Coming to the end of those old crop of the current marketing years uh, uh, for corn, sorghum, and for soybeans. And, and you're seeing some cancellations of old crop, old crop uh, business rolling over into the new crop business. It's really interesting to see how much of the USDA's projection uh, has, been, has, has been rolled into those new, new uh, marketing years. For soybeans, USDA's projected about 2.1 billion bushels in exports uh, projected about 1.6 this year so for next year 2.125 forward bids 35 36 percent of that already out there so that is that's pretty good the next of, of uh when you look at at uh, grain sorghum bids are about 28 percent of the what usda's you know, of forward bids into that next year and uh at, that's for 260 million bushels we had 210 projected for last year and for, for, for the one we're in now. And for corn, 22% uh, of the way to 2.225 billion bushels. Uh, USDA's projection is uh, going to be about 1.75 or so. So higher exports and at least 22% up to 35% of the way there already. So there, there are things afoot in that market. China's a big part of it, but they're, they're not the only one. And so that would all come together to suggest that maybe there is some bullishness out there over the not too distant horizon for these markets, the row crops. That is. I, I think so. And for, even for wheat, you look at all U.S. wheat exports, we're about 40, well, you know, and we're 11 weeks into this marketing year. Uh, we're 41%, 42% of the way to the USDA's projection, 975 million. We're only 21% of the way to the marketing year. So that's... That's good for all wheat. For hard red, we're 36% of the way there, again, for 20% 20, 20 of, of the year. So um, we're, again, we're bemoaning the negativeness, but the low prices and, the, and the, the weakening U.S. dollar relative to some key currencies is, uh, it, you know, it, it's helpful. It, it's not showing up much in, in uh, I guess it's not showing up much in, in the futures markets, but Again, the old adage, it's, it's economically sound for theory, the best cure for low prices is low prices. So we got low prices, we got a lot of export business right now going on and, and uh, eventually that'll, that will tend to bring demand up to the place where we whittle down stockpiles and, and get us out of this low price situation. Well, the speedier the recovery, the better in that respect. I would say and amen to that. <laughs> Dan's notes on the markets, as always, are posted weekly on the agmanager.info website. Give those a glance, agmanager.info. Dan, we appreciate your time and your comments. Many thanks. Thanks, Eric. Dan O'Brien from his office in Colby, Northwest Kansas, grain market economist with K-State Research and Extension. Agriculture Today returns after this over the K-State Radio Network.